Hey, Traders Roggy here, and I've been getting a lot of questions over the past week, so thank you for for those questions uh, that you guys have been sending to Roggy at simplertrading.com. I'm humbled and I'm thankful, and they're, they're actually great questions. So the two big questions I've been getting mostly of are, Roggy, how do you build your watch list from the, the you know, many commodities and currency markets that you could trade you know how, why would you select coffee and beans versus anything else those are two big winners for us this week you know why are you long euro versus something else you know how do these pairs and, and commodity symbols end up on your watch list versus something else i cover that in the premium video but the second most popular question i've been getting has to do with my beloved darvis and i've been using this tool on and off since I was about 16 years old. I'm going to be 46 this year, so that gives you an idea of how long I've been a fan of the Darvis box. And you know what's really interesting about kind of coming back to a tool that I used, I've used on and off, but one of the first tools that I used in my youth as a young, young trader is the fact that I even back then, I really wasn't looking for the shiny new object. I was actually looking at trading tools and styles and strategies that dated back not a year or two or ten but fifty and a hundred and that might sound like hyperbole but you know Darvis was using this style in the 1950s Charles Dow who greatly influenced why and what the wave is that was those were writings that were in the early 1900s Schaubacher Wickoff these were early 1900s traders, even reminiscence of a stock operator who everyone will agree is one of the top three, five books traders should read. I mean, again, you look back on the fact that these guys had handwritten charts and ticker tapes, but has the market changed all that much with electronic trading and, you know, high frequency and yeah, things are faster and they can be more volatile, but human nature in and of itself hasn't changed, which is why these tools work so darn well. So one of the questions I've been getting is, Rog, what is the Darvis? How does it work? How do you use it? So let me walk you through that here in the next few minutes. Looking at the Darvis box, first of all, the way the modern trader uses Darvis has nothing to do with the way Nicholas Darvis uh, first explained it in his book, How I Made $2 Million in the Stock Market. What he did, and he actually had a very loosey-goosey kind of description of what it was. So there's, that's why you'll see a little bit of variety in the way that people do it. But generally speaking, uh, most people will agree that a Darvis box setup is this. You, well, you, wait, you find a Darvis box and you wait for price to close outside the box boundaries. That was what Darvis had talked about with a bullish bias. He bought Darvis box breakouts to the upside within the context of trends. That was what he was trying to take advantage of. He was a momentum trader within uptrends, which in uptrends that can actually work pretty well. So what I have found is within the context of a trend, I'll use both sides of the box. And this is something that Darvis did not do. So if I'm looking at this box that we have right now, I've been recommending buying the pullback to the box, not the breakout. And a lot of people will find unless you're trading new 52 week highs using the Darvis box, your success rate's going to be pretty lousy. Okay? Because he never intended there to be these three day, four day boxes. Basically, you put in a day one brand new high and then you follow the next three days and you end up with this kind of three day, this one plus three day cycle of a four day box. And he never intended that to be near new high, near-term new highs, but rather 52-week highs. So we're already bending the rules with modern interpretation. However, you find a new high, which is the highest high, and, and now the market, instead of the last three days, the market can perceive that as the last three candles, right? Not 52-week highs. So you find the top of the box with the highest high from the uh, first high, and then the next three candles cannot be higher than that high. That's how you have your high resistance level of the box. And you don't have to worry about this. I've been getting a lot of questions, so I'm going to give you guys the cliff notes of it. So there's your highest high, and the next three highs were lower, hence that high. Here's a high, next three highs were lower, there's your high. Once you've got the high put in, that's when you can look for the low or the bottom of the box. That's going to be the lowest low 
for the next three days. So again, you can see it's a four-day box, kind of a three-day cycle after putting in that high, which means there's a little hint of Fibonacci influence in here, isn't there? So once the box is complete, then you just wait for a breakout breakdown. Well, I don't agree with that type of trading in all respect to Darvis. What I will do is understand what the box is telling me within the context of the trend, up or down or non-trending. And I will use this box as support and resistance. And one of my favorite ways of finding support and resistance, which is what are the near-term highs and lows the market has put in to give us insight into where there is exhaustion. When you look at it that way, this tool becomes a fantastic and even more powerful than what Darvis had originally intended because you can buy pullbacks to support within the context of a trend. And you can look for exhaustion within the context of chop. So a lot of very interesting things you can do once you take Darvis and then overlap it with the underlying market trend. So let's jump into a few more examples of this. Since I was showing you this on the Euro US Forex side, let's jump into a few more examples of this and how I'm going to use this on a couple other charts. And the S&P comes to mind. Here's a near-term setup that I've got my eye on. Notice the Darvis low. Notice the uptrend. Am I interested in playing the momentum? No, I'm not interested in playing that, even though it's valid according to Darvis rules, and that would be a 52-week high, so it really is valid according to Darvis rules. I'd rather wait for the pullback and play a test of support, making it a swing trade with, with the wave support and the Darvis low support. So while this is valid to play the breakout, I'd rather take the better risk-reward entry and play the support of the wave and of the Darvis low. So let's, let's use another example. This is a trending market. What about a non-trending market? NQ has transitioned out of its trend. It's still a bullish market, don't get me wrong, but you could have a bullish market that no longer has a high quality trend, which I think is what's happened in the NQ here. So notice what's happened. I've got still the remnants of the bullishness of the uptrend, but I've got all these blue grab candles indicating there's a little bit more chop here. So what I want to do is take advantage of the Darvis low and wait for a move lower down towards support. And in that way, with an oversold stochastic, I can actually get long off the Darvis low and previous lows, which is what Darvis uses. What about another example? Let's take a look at the bond market, the U.S., the 30-year. Notice how far I need to trade down lower to even get to a level. You know, I've been joking, calling it this uptrend too legit to quit. You know, kind of dating myself a little MC Hammer. <laughs> so take a look at the 30 year here. If I go to the 480, look at the little consolidation at the top of this trend we're seeing. Could I buy that level there? I could. It would be a little aggressive, but that would be a valid buy. I'm waiting for the pullback. I don't want to buy the breakout through the high. In fact, that would actually be a level that I should respect as a potential ceiling because the, the whole reason that was even there is because it was resistance. And I want to respect this as resistance until it proves to me that it's not. So I could actually buy a pullback to the lower level of the Darvis and take a little bit off the table at the upper end of the Darvis. And this way I've got a little bit more aggressive and, and maybe even, you know, smart trade management based upon the fact the market has shown me that traders are willing to step in there and keep the market from heading higher. So just a couple different ways on some markets that I have on my radar using the Darvis. And one of the great, re great ways you can use Darvis is just to automatically identify some key support and resistance levels. Rather than having to manually identify this, this could be automated and on your charts, and it's just doing a little bit of the heavy lifting for you based upon previous lows and highs, which is why I love it so much. So check it out. Put, pull it up on your charts. There's a lot of ways you can do it. It's available on most platforms that I've ever heard of, TOS, TradeStation. And I've shown you guys how to pull this indicator up on your charts. In fact, you'll notice in the free newsletter section of Simpler Futures, there is a 
update right here. You can set these indicators up on any chart. That's a 90 minute free presentation I did. You guys can check that out if you want to replicate some of the tools that I have on my charts. Take some time, check it out. Definitely worth your while. I'll see you in the next update.